In this presentation, we will generate, analyze, print, and export to an Excel an aged payables report, otherwise known as an accounts payable aging report. Let's engage with Sage 50 Cloud Accounting. Here we are in our Bellwether Garden practice file. We're currently in the customer and sales section. We're going to go to the reports drop down. And within the reports drop down, we're now looking at the accounts payable. We're considering the accounts payable. Note that any section that you go into will typically open, will, will open this bo dialog box. And then you can choose the accounts payable on the left hand side. So now we're thinking about the accounts payable cycle. When you think about the accounts payable cycle, you want to kind of envision the whole payable cycle. And that typically starts with the entering of a bill. If we're doing the full payable cycle, the entering of the bill, which will increase the payables accounts and the other side going to an expense or possibly to inventory. Then we're going to pay the bill and we're going to have to decrease the cash and decrease the payable. Now we're going to have to know then who we owe the money to. So similar to accounts receivable, if we talk about accounts payable, you think about the typical questions that might be asked by an employer in accounts payable. First is, how much money do we owe people, our vendors? And we can get that from the balance sheet in the accounts payable account. Next question, of course, is, well, when is it due? When do we have to pay that? And who do we have to pay to those people? Which vendors do we owe for? And how important are those vendors that we, that we need to pay? Which ones do we need to pay and when? And for that, you can't just go to the GL account again. You can't just double click and go on the GL account because that's going to be in order by date. We need another report that's going to be in order by vendor, the people that we owe, and possibly with an aging format to see how old it is that we owe so we know the priority of which the payments we need to make. So let's go ahead and open up the age payable. This is a very common report if you're working in the uh, payable section of a company. So if we go down similar to the receivable uh, report, we're going to have now not customers, but vendors because we're on like the payable side of things instead of the receivable side of things. And then we have the, the breakout of zero to 30 days, 31 to 60 days and the 61 to 90 days over 90 days. We've got to pay those definitely. And then the amount due. Let's go ahead and open up the balance sheet account because this report is supporting in essence the balance sheet account of the payable, the liability account. So let's go and uh, go back on over to our reports over here. Let's go to the financial statement report, which is where the balance sheet lives, and then go into that balance sheet report. I'm going to keep the standard settings, so that looks good. I'm going to say OK, opening up that report. We're going to scroll on down to the liabilities side, and now we have accounts payable 90871 90871 If I go back over to our aging report, you would think, is what the bottom line number i'm going to scroll down over here because there's a lot of stuff apparently we owe a lot of people 91 uh, 71. now again this should tie out if it's if there's any difference between the 91,071. if there's any difference between it then that would be a result of something being posted to a payable account but not having a vendor assigned to it so like the receivable needing a customer for every transaction a vendor or a payable should have a vendor basically tied to every transaction so that when we uh, report the payable accounts and the aging accounts, we could tie that to what tie that out to what's on the general ledger. It, it could be adjusted. There might be adjustments that happen at the end of the year, like adjusting entries that could uh, possibly throw that off for uh, different reasons. But notice that that's going to be the general rule that we want to have. So in this case, then we have we owe the total of the 91.71 according to this report and six cents. And then we have the current amounts. So these are the amounts that are currently uh, that we're OK with. And then we have the 31 to 60. So these are the ones that we've got to start uh, by priority in terms of paying them when, when they're paid. Look into those items. And these are the ones that uh, we really need to look into because they're past due. And then the over 90 days are, are going to be these items. We don't have anything in that section, thankfully. So let's go ahead and print this out. We have our similar options up top, the printing option, the saving option. Uh, we have we have the options here for our periods that we can run this report by within the columns section we do have different column options that we can have here and we have the filtering options as well so you can consider the uh, filtering options to see what kind of uh, information you would like on the report then we're going to ha have the fonts here the setup the hide we have we can email this report to someone excel save it as a pdf file we're going to go through our similar process now. We're going to be saving it as a PDF file, but I want to use the Qt PDF printer to practice the use of the Qt PDF printer. So I'm going to print it, but I'm going to print it to the to the PDF file. So we're going to save it. This is one way that we could save this document and then attach it. We're going to have all these uh, forms that we have now that we're going to imagine that we're going to be providing to somebody. I'm going to put this into the financial statements, aged payables. That looks good. I'll keep it there. 
I'm also going to export this. So we're going to export this to Excel as we've seen in the past. It's going to go to an existing workbook because we put our financial statement workbook here, which might be better called like financial statement and reports at this time because we got like more stuff than just the financials, but that's okay. We're going to keep that. And then we're going to say, uh, okay. It's going to then open up that Excel file, the current uh, Excel file that we have been working with, add a new worksheet to it. So same workbook, new worksheet. There we have it. I'm going to go ahead and maximize this. Once again, this is a report that can tend to be a little bit long. So we typically will have to do some formatting to it if we want to print this along with other types of reports. And, and so if I go to the to this tab over here, the layout, we can more clearly see that it doesn't fit on one page wide. That's a problem. So we're going to have to go back over here and say that can't be. We need to fix this. We need to put it on one page wide. So there's going to be like the end point. So hopefully we can just adjust the pages. Now note that you first want to check the page layout typically and see if in the page setup group if its orientation is landscape. So landscape will make it a little bit easier. Uh, it'll kind of mess things up when you if you have to staple reports together. You got to know where the landscape, how you know, do you want the landscape pointing this way or that way? But you know, if you have to do landscape, you got to do what you got to do. So that's what we got to do. And then we get, we can then adjust the columns. So I could say maybe if I double click on these columns like we did last time, it'll shorten some of them. So I'm just going to double click on them and see if it could shorten some of them like that. And then obviously we have the filtering options within the report, you'll recall. We can also filter uh, within here by hiding columns if we so choose. So we might say, hey, you know, maybe I don't need this column, but I don't want to delete it. Maybe I just say right click and hide that column. So then it's like still there but it's not going to be printed in this in this particular report but if they want to look at it on the worksheet or we not need to go back to it we can always unhide it by selecting like this column to this column right click and unhide so that's an that's an option you can use too so instead if you don't want to like completely remove the data but you want it in the report but you want to be able to print things on one page wide and it's not doing it because you have too many columns then you can hide something so now let's go ahead and save this so once again you could use this to print uh everything and it's all pre-collated and everything or we can print one pdf file with all the reports on it so let's do that now we're going to go to the file tab we're going to go to the printing option we're going to be using the cute pdf printer free option some type of pdf printer is useful this one's been beneficial to me i do recommend it not affiliated with it but uh, it's been a good thing and then we're going to have the entire workbook and not just the one worksheet if we scroll through it now we've got the balance sheet got 17 pages down there income statement the statement of cash flows the customer sales the aged receivables and there's a lot of age receivables and a lot of age receivables and then the payables that's what we just added here we don't have like weird stuff happening because it didn't fit up one page wide we don't have like another page of like a column that we have to tape together so that looks good so then let's go ahead and print this out so i'm going to go ahead and print this out it's going to be saving it to a pdf file one pdf file with you know all those reports on it and like 17 pages it's going to be a very impressive documentation so we're going to select the drop down here put it in the section two put it overwrite this financial statement i'm going to say yes please and then i'm going to close this back out without even saving it first because we're living dangerously and then it asks us to save it and then we save it so, so i don't recommend doing that that's just what i do do what i say not what i do i'd recommend saving it first but you know i'm just kind of like to live dangerous so then i'm going to go in here and go to the section two and now we can give this to two people we can provide the excel file or print it all out from the excel file pre-collated we can attach like all these documents to to the to the one file or we can zip this file and give one attachment with a zipped file which still kind of has a lot of stuff in it or maybe we can give this one pdf file that's going to have like all the reports and this one pdf file now containing uh the 17 pages in uh the pdf file so those are the kind of formats you can think about with providing this information maybe you provide the information in all for all those formats and um and they can pick which one they want that's an option as well so that's going to be it for now let's get out of here